So now we're moving to number two, your customer profile. Your customer profile is a representation of the types of customers you hope to serve. So for example, we could say, let's pick Susan. Susan, remember, this is just a representation. Susan could represent a middle-aged woman living in America with a certain level of income with kids, her husband lives in, right? So this is a profile that you develop and this profile, Susan, could look differently. If you had, if you had a global business, the profile of Susan in America versus UK versus in Africa, their behavior and their pain points and gains might look different. So it's important that even if you have a global brand that you're reaching global consumers that you develop a customer profile for each region because their behavior and their patterns could be different so for susan we want to add, understand our pain points we also want to understand the gain that she's looking for so while we have the customer profile we also need to develop number three the value proposition so let's look at customer susan's pain points and gain with an example of a coaching business so let's say you're trying to offer a coaching business to customer profile susan a middle-aged woman living in America with a certain level of income. We want to understand our pain points and gains. For example, a pain point could be she's overworked and stressed. A gain could be she's looking to balance her work and life. Also, she might be looking to get promoted and increase by increasing her performance at work. This would be, for example, what Miss Susan here is trying to accomplish. This is her life. This is her this is our life, these are our pains, these are our aspirations. Remember I said earlier that you need empathy, EQ, and customer obsession to be able to do this exercise well. This is when we step out of ourselves and step into the shoes of our potential customer. Understanding their needs is what would help us to recommend and develop our value proposition. So what do you think some of the value propositions would be if you had a coaching business and you wanted to provide gains for Susan or help Susan remove her pain points. So for example, you look at the gain. She wants to have a balanced work and life. What would you offer her as a value proposition? A good example could be, you could offer her a training, that involves time management, right? You could offer her a training that includes time management. And part of this training, you will help her know how to dedicate time to her work and how to shift from work to life and thereby helping her feel more rested, okay? You could also teach her how to manage stress, stress management. So basically, when you understand your customer, you can now start prescribing solutions. 
That is why when you put the site by side, it's so important to really flush out as many pain points as possible and then map what you propose to solve for them. One thing to also note is that your customer profile and your value proposition could be one to many, many to one, one to one, many to many. What I mean by that is one customer profile could be served with one value proposition, many types of customer profiles. So for example, you could have Susan, you could have Mr. Bob as well with similar pain points that would also consume this value proposition. Also, you could have several value propositions for the same customer. So this is an exercise that you want to do for each customer, for each customer profile that you're hoping to serve and then work on your proposal to them. This is a very fun exercise because it helps you map your proposed solution to your potential clients. Now we're going to move on to the fourth phase.